Okay. Hello, people in TV land. I am in a Zoom room. I like to say with at least one other person, but maybe I even have two today. <laughs> maybe there's 300 people in here. Who knows? Um, actually, I often have two, and sometimes I have three, and sometimes four. It's it's amazing. Uh, today we're gonna. This is the Laban Lab. I'm doing my dimensional cross of axis with my hands just as I'm moving up, down, side, side, forward, backward. I can do them at the same time, right? Up and down, side and side, forward, backward, the hokey pokey. But that's not what we're going to do today. That's just been the theme of my week, the dimensional cross of axis. But we are going to play with uh, modes of shape change. And so we just did a role play that was very much about shape flow how the body relates to itself. So I really highly recommend that you go back and look at that one. It also, we also brought in a whole bunch of archetypal mother love. So we did some very yin, very female stuff in the last role play, which will be called shape flow, mother love or something like that. But today in this, we're gonna spend a little bit of time with the shape flow idea, and then we're gonna move on to directional shape and shaping. And what this all is, do you have a question, Bonnie? Yeah. Oh, okay. You're just Sorry. That's okay. <laughs> just got a little feedback sound. Um, what this all is, is how we as an organism are relating. So in shape flow, I, the organism of Laura, this body of water is relating to itself. So in shape flow, and let's just play with that for a few minutes. We did shape flow in the last class, but let's have a, a different shape flow now. And what I would like to really say is that every time we enter this game, this playing within our body, this experience of embodiment or somatics or whatever it is of movement, it can be different every single time. It's not always the same. We never step into the same river twice, right? Heraclitus says that because we are different and the river is different. So it's the same thing with this moment of playing with shape flow. We're allowing our body to do the little micro movement adjustments of just being a person. Hmm, how am I a person right now? My belly's kind of sloshing around. I just drank a bunch of juice. I'm getting some movement. I'm sitting on this ball. So the ball can provide a great resource for finding shape flow because you can soften yourself above the ball or you can watch me softening myself above the ball. I'm letting my jaw and neck and throat really relax. I'm thinking, let's just think about the gut body for a second. So from tongue to tail, that whole tube that goes within us, our digestive system, our digestive tract. And allowing like all of that little peristaltic activity, that's shape flow support. That's underlying shape flow support, taking in nutrition, swallowing it down, digesting it, and then eliminating it, letting it go, right? That's all this underlying shape flow support that's happening, which I can pay attention to coming into interoception, feeling the movement of my inner body, or I cannot pay attention to it and it's still going to be happening. So with somatic work, the idea is that you're bringing your awareness into whatever's going on. So playing again, like we could look at people standing in line, waiting to buy tickets in the movie at the movies. What a, what a novel idea. How many people have been going to the movies in the past two years? So they're standing in line or maybe at the grocery store and they're waiting. There's a huge line in front of them. So what do they do while they're in there? Now we have our phones. So I would say that our phones take us a lot out of the shape flow support. They inhibit our system, but let's pretend we have no phone. We're sitting there. We have nothing to do. Might shift around, scratch my head, rub my eyes, shift again. All of this activity is shape flow support. This is my body relating to itself to be as comfortable as possible. Like I'm in the line, maybe I'm daydreaming about something. The more I bring my awareness into my shape flow support, the more awareness and presence and connectedness ha I have with it, maybe the healthier that whole system can be like <sighs> growing and shrinking with the breath. I can feel myself on the inhale, opening up, <sighs> on the exhale, coming back in. So. There's this underlying breath support with lengthening and shortening, widening and narrowing, bulging and hollowing. All of that's happening on this shape flow level, this internal inner body level. 
any kind of fidgeting, touching of myself, any kind of that is like shape flow support. Digestion, shape flow support. Breathing, shape flow support. Heartbeat, shape flow support. Anything the vagus nerve does pretty much, shape flow support. Anything in our autonomic nervous system, shape flow support. Maybe even <gasps> is a kind of shape flow support. Freezing, I'm supporting my animal body. <gasps> But you can see that once I've gone into freeze, I'm not in flow anymore. So that might not be so supportive, right? So we're just thinking of these ways. That would be the sympathetic response to something. <gasps> or run. Yeah. So just thinking of these systems. Oops, let's go back to my ball, not the, not the thing. As being this shape flow support, the coherence of the systems in my body working together. Ooh, if I bounce around. I can do this in a very shape flowy way where I'm really into myself, just bouncing, ah, letting gravity take, do it, what do its thing in my body, free flow, gravity, mm, childlike, easy, playful. Ah, this is an underlying support of the fluid, the fascia, the systems getting a little bounce when those, when that fascia and water in our body bounces around, it's building resilience. It's building strength. So that was a big shape flow moment. It's flowy, it's watery, it's shaping on the inside. And what is shaping? Shaping is like the way that something is relating and making shapes. So thinking of our inner body shaping with itself is that shape flow. When we want to connect to the world, our first sort of bridges to the environment are gonna be like spokes, boop, reaching out. Thinking of yourself almost like a ball. I feel like there's a sea creature that looks like this, but I could be totally wrong. I mean, there's the pycnopodia that has like a million arms, but something that has, maybe it's like an octopus with a tentacle going out. But I think octopuses are so shapey. I'm not finding a good metaphor, but even a human reaching out, nice to meet you. I spoke my arm out into space and I shake it up and down. So I'm, but this is what we call in Laban directional, spoke-like, or arc-like movement. We're making a bridge to the environment. We're maybe not like, oh, I'm gonna pick the apple. I'm gonna bring it in. I'm gonna reach out and touch something. I'm gonna take it in, out, in. Central movement going from the center out to the periphery and coming back. Or maybe it goes out, it does something, and then it comes back, right? I'm making a bridge out to the world. <gasps> There's my friend. I spoke out, I arc around <laughs> there's my other friend i spoke out i arc around so that's like this directional spoke like like a spoke radiating out from the center or an arc it's maybe moving around the periphery i'm just touching the edge reaching out touching the edge or are you ever walking along and like there's something beside you like a bunch of uh bars and you can go blah, 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 blah. So your arm spokes out, it blah, 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 arcs along. I'm just touching the environment just lightly. I'm not super engaged with it, but I'm making a bridge to the environment. Can I do it with my toe? Yes, I'm at the pool. I have to see. Oh, it's, it's too cold. I'm not going in, right? Spoking out, bringing it in. I could spoke out. I could slosh it around. Okay, I'm going in. So that's this directional bridging to the environment, creating a relationship. Here I am, there you are. There's definitely some separation between us. I'm gonna make a, make a bridge between us. Maybe I'm gonna feel around in that. So that's our directional shape. We could also just spoke and arc, like what kind of dance, like ballet. It's spoke like and arc like. I'm gonna arc my leg, arc my leg. Lots of arcing. This is all making arc-like shapes. I'm arcing through space, right? It's very much my limbs going out to do something, my body staying kind of erect or not being super engaged by moving around, right? So that is that directional shape. Lots of modern dance is like this as well. Like I think Limon, there's a lot of arcing. There's a lot of undercurve. There's an arc, but that's kind of an arc in the whole body, but the whole body's moving as a unit. So just thinking about these ways. So there are three ways, and all of this goes under the 
auspices, <laughs> not of auspices, under the heading of modes of shape change. So the way we change shape. So the first one, I change shape within myself. I adjust within myself. The second one, I start to bridge to the environment. I am changing myself to make this connection. I feel like this is also happening like with like, I, I could be totally wrong about this, but like axons and dendrites, like within our body, things are spoking out, they're connecting, and then maybe they're really engaging and getting together, like within neurons, boom, boom. How is it all happening? We're reaching out and then we connect. And then I could be just talking really ramble anatomy, but it might also be sort of true. <laughs> I think there's the axons and the dendrites and they're like these, like tree like branch like things they are branching out, but then they make connections synapses things connect and then there's a new relationship. So that was our directional idea of what might be happening in the body. The final one is full on shaping and shaping is where it's like full three dimensional engagement with the environment right like I can shape with this ball, I can let my whole body engage with the ball and. I can spoke the ball forward and backwards, spoking it out. I can spoke it, move it in an arc. But because it's kind of heavy, my whole body really needs to start moving. So it becomes much more shaping. So we would say that spoke-like directional shape can be sort of one-dimensional or two-dimensional, making an arc or a spoke. But when we're talking about shaping, it's like fully three-dimensional. Like I am going to grab you and I'm going to pull you right into myself. Like when I'm playing with my cats, I'm not like this. I'm like, I'm in it, I'm playing, I'm having this complete relationship. Bridging, I've bridged, and then I'm gonna pull you in. So if we talk about like, when people are very sort of rigid and erect and sort of business-like, we might just be in directional shape. There's maybe not so much shaping going on. Like, can you imagine? a board meeting at a corporation where everybody came in and started shaping, right? What would that look like? And what kind of cultures are more shapey? Like there are some cultures that are very sort of, this is how we do things. It's all very contained and restrained. And then there's some cultures like, I'm gonna get in there and I'm gonna engage and I'm gonna make, I'm gonna be a part of it. So we can think of the shaping as like full engagement, full three-dimensional participation. If somebody's very kind of standoffish and is maintaining like their distance, you can sense that sort of peripheral relationship, right? They're not getting in there. And then there could be somebody who's very threatening because they get right in your space, right? They're in you, they're on top of you, they're making you uncomfortable, right? So these are all very cultural ways of being like shapey. Like what is this kind of walking? Like if I'm walking like, you can tell like this, my whole body is engaged. I am moving through space, right? Or I can walk like, you know, more stiff and rigid. So how we participate with being in the world, how is our animal body participating in being in any kind of group situation? Like the shaping part, we probably shape with some of our family, our lovers, Maybe our close friends, like, who do you like? Oh, I just can't get enough of you. I really want to be close to you. I really want to be engaged. So just thinking in terms of that, that is a little brief intro to modes of shape change. And I'm actually going to stop recording, but stay in the room and talk to you guys about that so that we can have a real conversation around it.